G'day viewers. Um, today's job, I am trying to fix up some of my sites in my solar analytics monitoring fleet. So, as some of you may be aware, Solar Analytics is an Australian based company that manufactures a solar monitoring platform. Um, I've made a video about solar analytics before, which I'll put a link to in the description. But um, just briefly, Solar Analytics uh, is uh, a monitoring platform for solar. Uh, it monitors your production and your consumption, um, which is nothing special. Lots of monitoring platforms can do that. However, uh, the big thing with Solar Analytics is it will give you a, an alert if in, uh, straight away if your system is not producing any power, but also if your system is underperforming, um, which is one of the, the, the standout features of the product and for quite some time there I wouldn't install a solar system unless I included solar analytics um, so I would build that into the price and include solar analytics it did add a fair bit um, to the price of my solar system but for me it's a deal breaker um, if they didn't want it um, because uh, essentially monitoring of your solar system is so important um, because otherwise you don't know if it's performing as it should be. Um, it could be underperforming, it could be not performing at all. Um, so solar analytics will send an alert to uh, the system owner and, and to myself as the fleet manager. So I've got 72 sites in my fleet but it relies, and that's the other good thing, is it, it communicates via the cellular network. It doesn't rely on your home Wi-Fi. So many, many solar inverters, well, most solar inverters these days can connect to your home Wi-Fi network. But if you change your modem, then you've got to reconnect it. And for people like me, that's a pain in the ass because you'll ring me up and say, hey, my monitoring's not working and it's like well yeah okay did you get a new modem yeah we did okay you need to reconnect and a lot of people don't understand that and and how to actually reconnect um, their inverter to their home Wi-Fi um, so solar analytics relies on the cellular network um, 3g 4g but it has become fairly unreliable of late especially with the 3G network being phased out. Some of the really early solar analytics devices were 3G only, so they're no longer working and you need to replace the device. Um, and the other problem is, is I have a few sites where the um, cellular signal or the mobile signal strength really isn't that great and you can check that just on your phone by looking at your signal strength um, so I do have quite a few sites where the signal keeps dropping out and then the system goes offline um, this is the little antenna that comes on the device and usually the device is installed at your main switchboard which is in Australia typically a metal enclosure so you're putting this little antenna in a metal enclosure and that greatly reduces the signal strength also. So what I'm doing is fixing up these sites that I've got that aren't communicating properly with an external 4G antenna. Um, so this has got a magnetic base and it's got a, I don't know, about a one meter lead. And I will plug this into the solar analytics device, put this on top of the metal meter box with the little whip antenna and that will solve the problem and uh, hopefully I'll get all my uh, sites in my fleet back up and running as they should be. Um, so I'll take another video once I get to uh, one of my sites and show you what I'm um, talking about. Okay so I've just gotten to this particular site. Now this site has 
Um, this site has got two solar analytics devices on it. Uh, it's a small rural property, so there's one down at the boundary, down there. And then there's another one in this shed here. So that's what it looks like there. And as you can see, our third LED is flashing, which is indicating that it has no signal at the moment and it's not communicating with the server. Now what I've also discovered here is that I've actually got no Telstra network. So in Australia, we've typically got Telstra and Optus. Um, Telstra is the network provider that Solar Analytics predominantly uses. And there is no Telstra signal here at all. I've got Optus, albeit very weak. Um, but I did just read online, and this should be true because this has been working. I installed this system here probably three or four years ago, and it's been working for the first year. It was working fine, and then it started dropping out here and there, and have to power cycle the device to get it back online. So I was confident that it will communicate via the Optus network and Solar Analytics tech support has just confirmed that it will roam between the two networks so that should be fine. Um, so I'm going to install a high gain antenna, I'll just put it up there and we're going to run it down to the device and connect, connect it to the device and then I'll power cycle and then we should be all back online. So I've installed the external antenna, the high gain antenna um, now I'm anxiously waiting for that third LED to stop flashing. Once it stops flashing, then I know it's communicating with the server. Um, but it can take, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes for it to stop flashing. And uh, then once it um, has started communicating with the server, then it can actually take some time to uh, repopulate the platform and start uploading data. The, the solar analytics device, when it goes offline, it will store data, oh, shit, I think two weeks, uh, I think, and then it will, uh, once it starts communicating again, it will upload that data. So if you do get brief little uh, dropouts, then you're pretty safe, it will um, upload that data and fill the gaps, but uh, I really want to see that third LED stop flashing. Um, I've power cycled it, turned it off for five minutes and turned it back on. It's been about probably five minutes now. Um, so I'll keep watching that and uh, hopefully it goes off. Otherwise it uh, will be another call to tech support, which I might add are uh, pretty helpful. Uh, they're pretty slow with emails, but uh, if you give them a call, they're generally pretty good. So I'll go and check out this second device. Now, if you're wondering why there's two devices on this site, it's because it's a rural property and I need this one at the front boundary here to capture all incoming power and exported power. Because there are sub-circuits on this board here, uh, if I put the consumption monitoring at the shed down there, I'm actually going to miss a lot of the consumption. Um, so that's why I've had to put this one up here. And this one I've mounted in this little external, um, just drop the antenna, there it is. Oh, and it looks like we've actually already got an external antenna on this one. Okay, interesting. So why is that not working? Hmm. Okay. Maybe that antenna is no longer compatible. The problem with the 3G, 4G and 5G network is the 3G signal is more robust, like it can travel further distances and penetrate obstacles like buildings and so forth but then 4G is weaker and then 5G is weaker again um, but the benefits of 4G and 5G is they can um, 
relay higher amounts of data faster but the signal is not as robust and that's why a lot of my sites are starting to drop out is because of uh, weakening signal strength but uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this one uh, fingers crossed it's just the antenna is no longer compatible or something so I'll change that and see what's going on okay so a bit of a bummer um, the one up at the shed up there I've installed the high gain antenna uh, the device didn't start communicating um, and as I said I've come down to this one with the antenna already installed and this one's not communicating either which is evident by that third LED flashing so I've rang solar analytics tech support and it looks like both the devices may need to be replaced by the manufacturer which is actually watt watches and um, that is due to a problem with the sim card that is actually in the device so just like your mobile phone they um, have a sim card in them and that's what they use for uh, their communication and um, have had a few devices in the past where the uh, sim card has been uh, faulty for whatever reason so um, yeah no resolve on this one today but uh, the manufacturer is going to look after us and send us out a couple of new devices, I believe. But um, that also means I need to come back to site to uh, install the new devices and commission them. So that one's still flashing. Um, now, a lot of the manufacturers in the solar industry will reimburse you a, a small fee for uh, call out work to replace faulty devices um, which is great but a lot of the times that fee doesn't even come close to uh, what it actually costs you from a business point of view to do um, that service work but I guess at least it's something um, that goes towards reimbursing us as, uh, as installers of this sort of equipment so uh, I'll, uh, I'll leave this one at that and um, send these details off to Solar Analytics and uh, wait for the manufacturer, Watt Watchers, to send us out two new devices and uh, hopefully get the system resolved and uh, it'll all be back online again. Righto, thanks for watching.